Brenda Wadby has lived through every mother's worst nightmare and then some. In 1997, her daughter Jenna was murdered. She was just a year and nine months old. But instead of starting the long process of grieving, Wadby was thrust into the role of suspect, largely due to the opinion of Dr. Charles Smith. Now, the now disgraced pathologist said the time of death implicated Wadby. He was wrong. But for nine years, she suffered the shame of a wrongful prosecution. Police eventually determined that she was innocent, and it was the 14-year-old babysitter who had murdered her daughter. Brenda Wadby's story is part of a new book, Death in the Family. It is written by author and journalist John Chipman. Both of them are here with us in the Euro Morning Studios. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you. A hard story to read, a hard story to tell, and even harder to have lived through. Uh, Brenda, how are you feeling today? With the book being released, it is finally the whole story is being told. How does that make you feel? It's been a long road, a long journey. But finally, everybody can see now what actually happened instead of catching only glimpses. And that is what we often heard in news, news stories. John, what did you learn about Dr. Charles Smith over the course of this book? This was a man who was revered. He was put on a pedestal. How did he go from there to being a pariah? Well, what's really interesting about Dr. Smith is, is he really, he did start out as someone that, um, that we lionize. I mean, he saw himself as, as a person who was, uh, who was going to answer, who was going to, um, to find answers for children who, he was, the, he was the last line of defense for defenseless children. And I think that that is something that we, we want and that we want, we want our uh, public officials to do that, but you have to stay within the lines. That was the thing with Charles Smith is he didn't have an ability to be objective and he didn't understand his role within the system and that caused all these problems and, and Brenda was one of them. Forensic shows like CSI make real heroes out of people they like, uh, like Charles Smith. You say that he wasn't qualified for the role, but the province of Ontario seemed to think that he was. What happened there? Well, at the time, there was, there was no, he, he had no certification or training in forensic pathology. And at the time, there was no ability to get uh, any certification in forensic pathology in Ontario or in Canada. So forensic pathologists in the country and in the province had to go outside, and, and he didn't go outside. He did have, he did have certification in pediatrics pathology, child pathology, but it was very, very late in the game. He didn't, I mean, he started doing autopsies in, in the early 80s, and he didn't get a certification in pediatric pathology until 1999. Yet his word was trusted uh, more than the words of, uh, you know, many of them were parents, a lot of them were mothers. Uh, you profile only four of the 20 cases in this book. Brenda was one of them. And Brenda, your case was very important because it was one of the only cases that, uh, that involved an actual killer in it. When you started digging into this story, John, and into what really happened, uh, what stood out to you? Well, Bren Brenda's, Brenda's case was an example of a wrongful plea. And, uh, you know, there was, there's wrongful convictions in which, in which people maintain their innocence throughout and, and uh, pled not guilty to crimes and went to prison for a long time. Brenda's case was a little bit different because she was, for a variety of reasons, coerced, pressured, she ultimately decided to plead to a crime that she didn't do. And that notion of a parent who's lost a child, that's the starting point for all of this. You have to remember, like, it's the, a parent's worst nightmare is losing mm -hmm. a child. And that's where it starts for these people. And the notion that a parent would have to get up in a court of law and say they did something, had some hand in the death of their child, I, it's, it's hard to wrap your head around, and that was what I really wanted to explore with Brenda's story. Well, we have you here, Brenda. Let's talk to you about that. You go from, you know, this, the shock and the pain of losing a child to suddenly being thrust into this role of suspect. What was that like for you? Horrific. There's no words to explain what I went through emotionally. It was, I was isolated from the world. You have what? another daughter, uh, Justine. I do. What did that do to your relationship? Justine and I, Justine was taken out of my care and placed in foster care for two years. And our relationship needed much repair when she came home. She wasn't completely sure whether I might have done something, but it took time to rebuild that. So she knew it was her mother again that I had done nothing to her sister. Uh, what is that like as a mom to have your child look at you and think that you were a murderer? Complete failure as a parent. There's no other way to describe that. It's complete 
an utter failure. This ruling of, of Dr. Smith's, uh, you know, not only put you in a hard position, it took your daughter away from you and put, you know, Justine into, into care within the system. Uh, it really destroyed so many lives. Have you been able to find a place of forgiveness in that? You've received an apology from Smith. Have I found forgiveness for, doc for Charles Smith? Absolutely not. His apology at the inquiry was very empty, very scripted. He has no remorse, I don't believe, for what he's done. He just, he said what he said at the inquiry for, you know, self-serving purposes, I believe. It was empty. You're here today. Many people look at you and think, how, how do you go on? Not only how do you go on after losing a child, a child that was murdered, it later came out that it was a 14-year-old babysitter who was the killer. Uh, how do you go on not only from losing a child that way, but this broken relationship with your older daughter, having been accused, having people look at you like you are you know, a mother who murdered a child? How do you get to where you are today? It was either I coped with what was going on or you die inside. And there was a light, a glimmer of hope. So I held on to it and I fought back. And I fought with everything I had to get where I am today. What did that feel like when you finally, when you were finally believed that what you'd been saying all along was actually true? Relief in a weird, in a weird sense. It was finally somebody actually hears me. Finally somebody listens. And John is one of the very few people that got it and got it all. It's a very complex case to wrap your head around. When were you able to begin the real grieving of the loss of Jenna? After this week's done. It, I've never really had a chance to grieve for her. I was a suspect, I was charged, I was under suspicion for so many years. The babysitter was charged, we had the inquiry, I was still a child abuser. 2012, it stopped my legal process, but that, you need time to recover from that legal process. And now the story's all been told. John, cases like Brenda's are very complicated. They are very layered. Why was Dr. Smith believed uh, over moms like Brenda? Uh, stature, I think. I mean, he had, uh, he also had people that worked within the corners, the chief coroner's office, um, who b believed in him wrongly, who protected him, who, you know, really weren't doing their jobs. The chief coroner at the time, James Young, the deputy chief coroner, um, Jim Cairns, and uh, I think it was, I think it was easy to believe a person that had the stature and the position that he did over um, you know, uh, a single mother in a difficult situation in Peterborough, it just, people made leaps of logic. Uh, it's not right, uh, it shouldn't have happened, but it did over and over again. What recourse has there been for Dr. Smith? Where is he now, do we know? Uh, I spent years trying to track him down. He, he was living in, uh, out on the west coast in Victoria at the time of the inquiry, but that was nine years ago, and uh, I, I really can't say with any confidence exactly where he is now. In terms of recourse, uh, nothing criminal. No one involved in any of these cases, Smith or, or the other players, has ever been charged uh, criminally. He was, uh, they did launch an investigation into him, the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario, and uh, they, they finished that uh, several years ago, revoked his license and formally reprimanded him. But beyond that, uh, nothing has happened. We've got 20 families destroyed, and that's the only recourse. It, you know, humanity would say that seems outrageous, it's unfair. The, it's the question that everyone has, whatever happened to him. And the answer is, for a lot of people, for Brenda, for people that lived it, it's not very satisfying. Brenda, I want to congratulate you for moving on with your life. Wish you all the best as you begin your grieving process. Thank you. We will be thinking of you. Thank you for telling your story today. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks. All right, the book is called Death in the Family.